when I talk about my life, it really encourages people, it helps them grow, um, it gives them a beautiful insight um, into the things that um, they're also experiencing because I share for my life. And so my name is Angie Morenga and you're watching Just Angie. So the particular part I want to share about my life is I guess the transition I made from being this party girl, party animal to going into church and becoming born again. And it's important, I always tell people to look at patterns and also just learn from your life. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with, I grew up, of course, in a, in a like most Kenyans, in a Christian home, went to convent schools. Um, so that was my life. So I knew about God, you know, somehow, but I don't know what happens. It, it was there. It was, God was there, um, but not really a very big part of my life, but he was there. And then when I, 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 I gave her to my daughter and she was growing up, it's amazing how I find that parents want better for their children. So I guess even for us, because we grew up um, knowing the ways of God, I wanted her to, to grow up knowing the ways of God. And I tried to, I'd go to church and try to get her to go to Sunday school and she wouldn't go to Sunday school. And she'd come out of Sunday school and come into the main church and refuse to go. And I was like, but you need to be learning, you know, cause she can't understand the things that are being shared in the main church. But whatever I did, um, she wouldn't, um, agreed to go to Sunday school. Then I went to this church. It was actually in Nairobi Chapel. At that time, they were up at Mamlaka, where Mamlaka is now, near the Nairobi Primary School. And when I took her to Sunday school, the child would not leave Sunday school. So I love that because that was a hook God used. So now she started loving the Sunday school, so I had to engage in church. When I went to church, coming from the background that I come from, eh, this church was very noisy, very alive. I was like, this is too much drama. Why are these people so noisy? What are they so excited about? What are they happy about? It wasn't my traditional church way of doing church. But then now the child will not come out of Sunday school. So that was good because as a parent, no matter how my own life was and what I knew about my life, which was a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, a lot of partying, you know, um, I wanted her to sort of, like I also had a, a sort of a, a Christian beginning. So I wanted her to have the same thing. So because um, the child uh, would not come out of Sunday school, so I stayed in church. And you know, I laugh now at myself. I'd go to church, you know, I must have been a mess. First of all, I have a hangover. Then, I, you know that the, that alcohol that smells, it's so fresh. Then I'm a smoker, so on top of that, I've added smoke, I must have been a hot mess. But I used to give people another eye of, where was I drinking at tears? Leave me alone. So I started going to church, and then I started getting convicted in there. So I'd love the messages, I'd love the environment. It took me a long time uh, before I got born again. So if you're out there and you're still searching, that's okay. But I would always be in church because my, my daughter always wanted to be in church. And then, that's the place I also want to talk about addictions because all this drinking and smoking, these had become addictions. It become a lifestyle, you know, not um, that I couldn't function without them, but you know, I somehow I had convinced myself that I need them. And maybe you're out there and that's what you have. You've convinced yourself that you need this. And this is the only life, you know, this is the only habit, you know, there's more to life, you know? And like I said, in the previous video, I was looking for a high, you know, there's an emptiness inside each and every one of us that only God can feel. I'm telling you, nobody, nothing else can fill that void. And so that's the life I knew. I knew that we go out on Wednesday, we go out on Friday, we go out on Saturday, we go out on Sunday. You know, it was just a cycle. But I began to see, mm, this is what I want, and I began to listen to the teachings. And um, I love um, my behavior, because I just say that's just Kenyan behavior. So before I drink on Friday and Saturday, go to church on Sunday, just make sure that I'm in church. But because of my child and she wants to go to Sunday school. And then now what I started doing is I stopped drinking on Saturday and drink double on Friday. That is the good uh, Kenyan way to do it. So, Friday, double, because Saturday I'm not drinking. So just because of this message and this environment, I started like trying to wean myself off and I wanted to be fully alert and to engage in the, in the message. And um, I wanted to talk to you about that. You know that you have addictions, and like I said, some addictions can be seen, some addictions cannot be seen. Like if you have addiction to food, we probably can see it. If you're addicted to alcohol, they don't have to see it, you know? Um, there are many functioning alcoholics, nobody would, would need to know. Um, if it's pornography or something like sex, nobody will know it really, it's only you who knows. So whatever your addiction is, whether it's a visible addiction, uh, whether it's an invisible addiction, you need to surrender it to God. And that's why I think I've come to the point where there's no addiction which is greater than the other. They're all addictions. They're just um, things that we're used to that we cannot um, seem to function without or we have convinced ourselves or the enemy has convinced us that we can't do without them and we've got to stop. Um, and even for me, when I think about, like I told you, I've recently lost weight and I've got a lot more weight to lose, but I've lost a lot of weight, is I start winning myself off one thing at a time. 
So I said, I can't do this whole something. So what I said, okay, I'll stop taking sugar. So that's gone. I was really shocked. I could do it. Now I'm trying to wean myself off bread. Please say a prayer for me. I need press. Uh, but I, you know, bread is now the next thing that I'm trying to say, I'm going to stop. Or, and then I started eating in smaller quantities, you know, eating off a side plate instead of eating a full plate. I'm trying to cut down on my carbs, you know. So just eliminate um, things that you, you need to do. And I remember, I don't know why, even in this... Um, as I was going through this journey of being in the right environment, of reducing the number of days that I was engaging with alcohol, I asked myself a question which has also just dropped into my spirit, which you should ask yourself, where am I when I sin? What is it that drives me to this sin? And for me, first of all, it was mostly weekends. And when I look, a bit at, uh, look at it now, it was also loneliness. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that um, in this journey of salvation, which I was sharing about my life, um, when, my, when me and my husband parted ways, um, I... I was in a drunken stupor for about two years. Hey, that's a long time for a drunken stupor. But I just threw myself now into really drinking. I really, hey, when I look back, I, I don't know what that was about. But I lost myself. I guess it's the pain, the pain of rejection, um, the pain of not having a marriage. I never thought, I don't think there's anyone who gets into marriage thinking that you'll be a statistic or a figure that um, your marriage has now ended. Um, so it, there was a lot of pain, so I really drank myself into a stupor. And then at some point, I just sat and I looked and I said, what am I doing? What am I, I can't do this, you know? And then I'm raising a child. This is not helping, you know? So now those kind of conversations, like maybe maybe it was even the, the things that were being preached, the, 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 the teaching that was being preached from the, from, the, from the pulpit that started getting me thinking a completely different way. But anyway, all this was going on and I was coming out of this. So when you're coming out of addictions, I think investigate what causes the addiction to happen, what triggered it off in the first place, um, what actually aggravates it or promotes it. You see, like for food, I'm an emotional eater. So when something goes wrong, I eat, and I have to eat something sweet, you know? Chocolate, preferably. You know chocolate, it's a vegetable. It's a story for another day. It comes from the cocoa plant, so it is a vegetable. Anyway, if something happens to me, I'm an emotional eater, so I engage in it. So I've actually looked at my life and understood where this addiction is coming from. So you can't just say this addiction comes from nowhere. Find out where it's coming from. Find out what triggers it. Um, begin to wean yourself off it and begin to take baby steps to getting out of that addiction. So my life, where was I? So I started going to church and then one day uh, the, the preacher says, you know, some of you are waiting to get everything right in your lives and then give your life to Christ. But that's not how it works. And I was like, hey, that's me. I just sat up to listen because that was me. I was trying to get everything organized in my life so that I can now finally give my life to Christ and then it will be well because I knew the things I was doing. But he said that's not how it works. You actually give your life to Christ and then Christ begins to clean up uh, different things in your life. And that's why I say for me it became very liberating that salvation was not a list of do's and don'ts. It's about um, getting into a relationship with God that now makes you not do certain things, you see. Even there, when, I, when you're a mother, there are things that you don't do, you know. There was a time to party. I can't be now going to the club and, yeah, ooh, ah, that's... A... No, there was a time for that. Now that's not the time for that. So, you see, it's the way life is lived out. There's a time for everything. So, I now realized and gave my life to Christ and now God began the work of cleaning me up, you know. And it wasn't only... Sometimes I think we're very concerned about the outer things or like the things of... Like the drinking, the smoking, if there was... Um, if other people are engaged in fornication or adultery, it's not even outward. What about inward? So God begins a work of cleaning you up even inside, you know, cleaning up your character, cleaning up um, the mistakes you've made, giving you direction, guidance, don't do this, don't do this, go here. And that now, that intimacy is what births, what we sometimes refer to as do's and don'ts, but they shouldn't be there. It should be because because Christ is your friend, because God lives in you, that there are things that you don't do, you the things you don't engage in, and also, just to, as I um, bring this to a close, I remember I, I stopped drinking completely cold turkey, but it's because I drank so much. And then I also realized also there was something wrong with that. That's for me. I'm talking about me. Um, so I decided, okay, so I'll be doing a glass of wine here or have a, a, an Amarula here because I also don't want to become, I also don't want it to become something that, oh, now you don't drink and now, you know, you think maybe you're holier than everybody else. No, I want to not drink because it's my choice. But I don't want it also, even that, to become, I don't know how to say it, it's like a negative thing, you know? That I'm, I'm not, because the reason I stopped drinking is because I was so afraid that if I have one drink, it will amusha all the other drinks. And I will, <laughs> let me laugh at myself, I will find myself at the bar. No, I couldn't go back there. So I was going to go back there. So it was actually, actually, that's the word. It was stimulated also by fear. This not drinking. So once in a while, I, I have a, a drink because I can have a drink. Once in a while, I go 
um, hey, to some places where the mother, they, they went to another club. Hey, the music could not come out of the head for five days. I was like, that's why we don't go clubbing. I can't. The song, it was just yeah, resonating in my brain. I couldn't. I was like, I need peace. I don't need to go through that. So, But just finding yourself doing things that make you happy, that please you, but not being stimulated out of fear or being stimulated because um, so-and-so said you shouldn't do this. You have to have a revelation. You have to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. I think some of the places I even go is because when I go, people say, what is she doing here? Why? Hey, who said I can't be there? I can be there. I can be there also having a good time and shaking my head and enjoying the music. What is the problem? Who said I shouldn't be there? So I'm just asking you, because I'll just, that's just a snippet about part of my life and asking transition that you can transition through addiction because I did. Um, it's possible. Uh, break it down. Ask yourself the questions. Ask yourself the triggers and just begin working on yourself and, and ensure that um, that you stop. And if you need help, please call us. Honestly, I'm available to talk. I'm available to chat. I'm available to to listen. They are also, um, I'm, by God's grace, I have a team of leaders. So people are ready to listen and to engage you and um, walk you through. But I think the best thing for, for me is um, look at me. And if I overcame my addiction, especially of drinking and smoking, um, there was healing and deliverance in it. Um, you too can overcome. And also food. Now food, is, we're working on food and it's a, it's a work in progress. So I hope you're encouraged uh, by that snippet and also going to church because of your children. Wanting them, you know, sometimes we go to church, take them to, to Sunday school because we want them also to grow up knowing the, the ways of the Lord, you know. The Bible says train up a child in how they will go and they will not depart from that way. So um, that's my... My life, a little part of my life, and I'll be sharing more about my life. I share my life because it's practical, it's real, it's not theory, and it helps. So I hope you enjoyed listening to me, sending your questions, your comments, um, your feedback, um, thing, topics that you want us to handle and to discuss and to talk about. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for engaging. Uh, my name is Angie Morenga, and you're watching Just Angie.